Hey, how's it going? So, uh, I just want to talk about um, James Allen's book called As a Man Thinketh. So, this book is actually taken from the proverb that says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So, this is where uh, this entire book comes from. So, the the undertones or the overtones or the entire vibe of the whole book is very, very uh, scriptural, very wise, and it's based on that uh, verse. So, um, as a man thinketh in his heart, um, in its own right, is... Um, a very very deep concept that is saying that a man a person any human being thinks not in his brain but in his heart so it's the head or the heart and the heart is where the thought process occurs so this is where the the whole concept comes from so it's talking about how your heart relates to your entire mind so how are you able to think with your heart so this is something that um, is the backbone of this so it's about how your heart thinks so your heart is where everything happens guard your heart with all diligence from there off springs all of the issues of life so the heart is a place where um, everything in your life occurs and that's where everything starts and that's where everything ends so your heart is the is the seat of everything that happens in your life so your thoughts are actually in your heart but your brain is just a processing device that when you decide something you consciously know it in your brain but your heart has everything that is subconscious so these are the subconscious feelings subconscious thoughts and some of them are actually conscious so everything that happens is happening in your heart so the heart is where all of the water in your body is purified because the the plasma in your body or the the blood in your body all comes through your heart and goes to every other place in your body including the brain so the heart feeds everything the heart feeds the brain the heart feeds the stomach the limbs everything so everything starts in the heart and goes to the heart so the heart has this um electric vibration this pulse so um the heart is the core of your being it's everything so the heart is actually the earth when you take the word earth and you take the h at the end of earth and put it in the beginning you have heart so your heart is earth so you take that h and then you put it at the end you have earth so your heart is the earth so everything is connected but especially the heart and the earth so Everything that happens on the earth is happening in your heart. Everything that's happening in your heart is affecting the earth. So your heart is very, very important. And everything that you think, you think you think it in your mind, but it happens in your heart. So this book is focusing on how some of the things you say to yourself, like the things that you say in your heart, the things you say in your mind, that's still small voice. This is what we're talking about. We call it the sixth sense. We call it the soul. So um, this is where God lives. You reside in your heart. So this is where your true essence is. So this is where you're grounded. This is where you come from. People come from the earth. People are taken out of the ground of the earth. You come from the ground of your heart. So Everything that you're saying to yourself, you're saying it in your heart, you're saying it under your breath, and these are the things that this book is talking about. So, what you say in in secret, in silence, you think that no one hears it, you think that it doesn't matter, these are the most important things. So, every thought that you have, so you process the thought in your mind, but it comes from your heart. So, every thought that you have is a building block of your reality. So every thought is a seed. So this seed is planted and is watered and it flourishes in your real life. So what happens is that when you have a seed, what happens is you plant it in the ground, in the earth, in the heart, and then it, it, it's, it's hidden. You don't see the seed, so it's in secret. Just like every thought, you don't see your thoughts, they're the seeds. And these seeds are planted in secret. 
and you don't see what's happening with them when they are underground. So this is the same thing that happens on the earth, the same thing that happens in the heart, which is the same thing. So you've planted the seed and uh, it grows in secret. So the same thing happens with your thought. You plant this thought in your mind in secret and one day it becomes a plant and this plant is visible to anyone with eyes to see, right? And then when you're seeing this plant, don't forget that it's coming from a seed. Just like an egg has inside it hidden a chicken. There's a chicken hiding inside every egg. So you have to know this and know that you don't have an egg without a chicken. And I'm not going to go into what came first, the chicken or the egg. But what came first, the seed or the tree? The seed or the tree. So you don't have a tree without a seed. Even though you, you might never be acquainted to the seed. You might, you, mightn't, you mightn't even know what a mango seed looks like. Alright, you definitely do because it's in the fruit. But uh, you mightn't know what... Um, <clears throat> um, like a grape seed looks like whatever whatever you might not even know the seed what uh, a maize seed looks like but the, the 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 essence of as a man thinketh is that every seed is in the fruit and this is the law of nature so what you are is what you have and if you want to change your thoughts then you have to change your mind change the seeds and then you plant a different thing but whatever happens is that the, the earth will always produce. So it, the earth might produce weeds. The weeds are always going to be produced uh, regardless. But if you make the conscious decision to produce bananas, for example, then you're going to make sure that you plant bananas. But, but then the inevitability of life is that production will always occur. So if you just leave some, some earth untended, Something is going to grow on it if the conditions are right. So even in the desert, you'll find that uh, cactus will still grow. So whatever happens in the garden of your life is something that is being planted. So what is being spoken about in this book is that some of these seeds are conscious and some of them are unconscious. So you have to be in the process of making your unconscious conscious of everything that is happening and this is what it's all about so this book is talking about how you're supposed to direct your mind the mental faculties of your mind in order to get the fruits that you want so the way that you direct your mind is by consciously knowing the right environments to put yourself in this is important by consciously knowing that everything works on a law of causality this is very important and if you get one thing from this book or from this video it is that that everything is cause and effect so cause and effect affects everything you are a result of cause and effect the the cause was sperm and an egg the effect is you so don't be fixated on trying to fix effects like uh, you might be in a situation where you need more money and uh, the effect of you not having money. So don't fight the fact that you don't have money. Fight the cause that is causing you not to have money. If that is the problem that you want to fight. So the cause could be like, all right, I need to develop a new skill. The cause could be like, all right, I need to develop a new mindset. And at the bedrock of everything that is going to change on the ground of it, the basis of all change. The basis of everything on earth is the earth. The basis of everything in your life is your heart. So the basis of it is going to be your mental shift. So you have to shift your mind in order to get a new result. So this book is so, so, so beautifully written. And it's so concise. When I was reading it, I had to reread a, a lot of the passages because... The way that James Allen puts it, it's, it's because he's actually a poet. So the way that he puts it, it's so dense. So when you hear how he hear, well, how he states the words, he puts them in such a way that 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 uh, explaining them to someone else would be nearly impossible because you just have to quote it. So I just have a couple of quotes that I just wrote again because I've read this book a couple of times. So I'm just going to read a couple of quotes from here. So the soul attracts what it secretly harbors. This is something.
the soul attracts what is secretly harbors. So you have to know that uh, even if you're afraid of something or if you love something, both of these are harbored in your heart. So these are going to be attracted to you. So the, the only way to free yourself is to free yourself from fear, doubt and hesitation. And this is the only way that you're able to advance in your life. So circumstances don't make a man, they reveal him to himself. Men don't attract what they want, they attract what they are. So you have to be it before it becomes you. So prayers are granted through thought and action, cause and effect. So causes of fate and destiny and all of those types of things can be formed by conscious vices or unconscious weakness. So some of the things that are affecting you are consciously in your mind. So the whole process of you um, taking responsibility of your life, and I think the whole purpose of this book is for a person to take responsibility of their mind, of their action and of their life. So the, whole, the, in, the only way to take responsibility for your life is to, 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 be, to be conscious of all of these things. So it says that they are, con they are conscious vices and unconscious weaknesses. So some people don't know that this is the cause and they're just trying to fight the effect so if you're gonna fight a disease which is dis-ease in your life so if something isn't as easy as it's supposed to be because the way of the righteous is like a smooth highway so things are supposed to be easy for that righteousness because righteousness is the law of the universe the kingdom of god is of righteousness so um to fight any dis-ease is to fight anything that is, uh, it could be something that is conscious. So you know that, all right, I have to stop smoking, or you know that I have to wake up early now, or you know that I have to give my all at work, whatever it is, this could be something conscious. But then some of the things are subconscious. So if you wanna fight a malady, if you wanna fight a disease, then you have to, you don't, you, you see that there's a disease based on the symptoms, but then you don't fight the symptoms. The symptoms are just there as indicators. But the actual thing that you have to fight is the cause of the disease. So if you want to fight disease, the best thing to do, well, prevention, if you can prevent it. If it's a flu, then uh, attack it before it attacks you. So this is how you fight disease and this is how the whole science works. So, <clears throat> so to improve your circumstances, you first have to improve yourself. So uh, the purpose of suffering is to burn and purify. So this is interesting though, but, but then he says that suffering is just there as a circumstance that burns and purifies you so that you become a better person. So as you alter thoughts towards things and other people, things and other people alter toward you. Interesting. So this is basically um, what um, they say when they're speaking about the law of attraction, whatever. And this is something to that effect. But this is cause and effect. And cause and effect, causality, is the only law in this universe. The only law in this universe. God spoke, something happened. The cause, the effect. And then they call it, they call it speech because it's a vibration and it's a sound. So, it, so this sound is what they call the big bang. So, of course. So this is the same thing that they're talking about. The big bang, the big sound, let there be light. Those are sounds. And that's the word. So um, another one is think, yeah, I love this one. Think strongly, attempt fearlessly, and accomplish masterfully. That's dope. So conquer fear and doubt to conquer failure. So there's this formula that, um, or oh, I took it as a formula, but he says fearless thought plus purpose equals creative force. So as he thinks, so is he. As he continues to think, so he remains. He who achieve must, must sacrifice much. So you have to sacrifice something in order to achieve something. So some, some people have to sacrifice their money. Some people have to sacrifice their sleep. Some people have to sacrifice going to parties. Some people have to sacrifice time on a cell phone. And all of these things. And I know about that one. So uh, um, calmness of mind results in a beautiful jewel called wisdom. Self-control is strength, right thought is mastery. Calmness is power. Say to your heart, peace, be still. And this is the last part of the book. So he's likening it to how Jesus walked on water during a storm. And he was, uh, 
well, that's another part. But uh, Jesus was asleep during a storm, and then he woke up and then calmed a storm. So this is the calmness, this is the serenity that he says is the jewel of a wise person. So this book is so, so powerful, and it's really, really tiny. So you can actually go through it um, in a day, in a couple of hours, even minutes if you're a fast reader. But it's very dense at the same time, so you would actually go over it a couple of times and read it in a few different states of mind, and you get different messages from this. Because I've read this book for a couple of years, and every time that I read it, it's like I'm reading it again for the first time, because it's like a poem. And when you hear a poem or you hear a song, there are certain states of mind that a poem or a song will put you in. So James Allen is a poet and he wrote this work of poetry. So it's not just a book, it's, 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 it's like, it's verses and lyric. So this is how you actually harness the power of your mind. So in this book, you're going to find out how to use your mind to your betterment. Your mind is your tool and you have to know that whatever is happening, whatever is revealed in your life is unrevealed in your mind. So some of the unconscious things that are happening are happening on, an, on a subconscious level. So this subconscious thought level this 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 wavelength you have to be aware of it and you have to know that everything that is happening has its roots has its seed in a subconscious realm that you can't clearly see with your eyes but everything happening has that causality so everything has a cause and everything has an effect so if you know this then you're you're, you're operating with high level information because some people are really oblivious to the fact that what they do has a result. So you plant a seed and then you, you get this. So if you plant a seed of mangoes, you're going to get mango fruit. So he says that um, whatever the case is, if you have good thoughts and good actions, you have good results. So this got me thinking because there's a time or so many times in my life where I think of doing something and have that impression but then the circumstances that come my way aren't desirable like something just goes terribly wrong and then you're like oh how did this happen but then what I discovered looking back is that all of those circumstances that I thought were bad were actually some of the best things that could have happened and some of those circumstances actually led me to making this video right now. If those things hadn't happened, I wouldn't have read certain books, I wouldn't have spoken to certain people, I wouldn't have had certain knowledge. So all of these circumstances have a good result as long as you know that the knowledge of your actions in any type of circumstance is the fruit of your thought. So, so everything that will happen, however good or however bad it seems, is going to be determined by your knowledge and how you act or perform in that circumstance. So this will be the fruit of your thoughts. Even in a bad circumstance, like something horrible could happen, but then how you react to it is going to determine the result of it and the result is already determined because of the seed that you've already planted in your heart in your earth in your mind so the mind is not the brain so yeah let's just let's just leave it there but then your heart is where it's all at so guard your heart with all diligence from there off springs all the issues of life so thanks a lot for watching this and if you think this will be helpful for somebody else please do share it with someone and um, just look at some of the links for some other cool stuff. So thanks a lot for sticking with me for this long and I, I really hope that you can find some time to uh, to listen or to read the book. Get the audio book if that's your thing. Read it if that's your thing or do both if those are your things. So thanks a lot and uh, all the best.